Snow White and the Struggle to Success. Hello everybody, my name is Namits and welcome back to another episode of The Know How. Today we are going to be looking at the struggle of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, an animated film that quite a lot of you might not have heard of, but it pioneered the way for other animated movies to come. Let's get into it. Synopsis In 2013, Walt Disney Animation Studios released Frozen, its 53rd animated feature. With takings of well over $1 billion and counting, it ranks as the most successful animated film of all time, eclipsing the previous title holder, Pixar's Toy Story 3, by around $200 million. Disney has survived a series of peaks and troughs since its founding in the 1920s. From its decline in the 1970s and early 80s to its revival in the 90s and its second burst of creative energy in the 2010s. From its inception, Disney Animation Studios has moved with the times, experimented with new technology, and taken creative risks. And its first ever feature, 1937's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, was perhaps the biggest creative risk of all. The Start one evening in 1934, Walt Disney got up on a recording stage in front of an assembled group of his animators. Over the course of about four hours, he went through the story of Snow White, the fairy tale princess who earns the hatred of her stepmother, the evil queen, and finds refuge with seven dwarves who live in a forest. By the way, these are the original sketches made for all, se- all seven dwarves. Disney acted out the tale with a trademark enthusiasm before del- delivering a final startling piece of news. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs would be a feature-length movie. This wouldn't just be a first for the studio, which had spent the past few years making a string of highly successful shots. It would be the first animated feature film in the world. Simply put, nothing like it had ever been attempted before. Nevertheless, the belief Walt Disney showed in his 1934 presentation proved to be infectious. Although initially taken aback by the thought of drawing an 80-minute film to life, the animators were beguiled by Disney's idea. The rest of the Hollywood film industry remained skeptical. When word got out that Walt was working on an animated feature, it was widely and smirkingly (laughs) described as Disney's falling. The studio's short films had continued to push technical boundaries and win awards. The Silly Symphony piece, The Three Little Pigs, won an Oscar in 1934, but the cost of making them was rising. All this led Walt to start thinking about taking the leap into features. After a few false starts, such as when proposed adaptations of Alice in Wonderland and Rip Van Winkle were considered, Disney pushed ahead with Snow White. The major question was whether audiences would pay to see almost 90 minutes of animation with not a real human being in sight. Financing Indeed, finances would prove to be a recurring problem throughout Snow White's production. Walt and Roy Disney had initially earmarked somewhere between $250,000 and $50,000 and $500,000 for Snow White's budget drop budget, roughly 10 times the cost of a Disney show. Walt said, our assets were pretty impressive, though we had our studio and a backlog of marketable pictures, so we could get credit backing. This meant that Disney was literally betting everything, including his own true house, on Snow White being a success. If Snow White sank, the studio would be pulled down with it. More worryingly still, the experimental nature of Snow White made predicting its budget extremely difficult. Although the project would use many of the innovations introduced in Disney's short films, such as the pioneering multiplane camera, which gave a sense of depth to a 2D image, Walt wanted to bring a more realistic scene style to the movie. To this end, Disney's animators practiced live drawing and spent hours, not to mention thousands of drawings, coming up with the look and movement of their characters. Footage from the period shows Disney's artists studying how long a flowing beard might move at the wind or shake of her head, but how a cloth billowed in the breeze. Every 
early stage of Snow White brought up a new technical or storytelling challenge. The look of Snow White changed radically as the animators sought to get away from a stylized Betty Boop like design to one more realistic and emotional. Likewise, the dwarves went through dozens of name and character changes for the final seven Doc, Grumpy, Happy, Sleepy, Bashful, Sneezy, and Dopey were chosen. While casting around for voice actors, Disney had so much trouble finding a suitable personality for Dopey that he simply gave up, hence the character being silent in the finished film. Even the formulation of pain requires some special consideration. According to issue 36 of Cinemagic magazine, 1,500 1, shades of pain were created over the course of several months. Problems All told, Snow White required the work of 750 artists, 32 animators, 25 background artists, and 102 assistants, and the creation of thousands of drawings. Unsurprisingly, the commitment to quality and detail soon took its toll on the budget. And as the three-year production went on and costs continued to soar, Walt Disney began to worry about the possibility of making Snow White a success. As the budget climbed higher and higher, I began to have some doubts too, he said. There was worse news to come. The project was way over budget, but the cash Disney had still wasn't enough. Royal Disney estimated that Snow White would need another $250,000 before it will be completed, thus pushing the overall cost to a then exceedingly high $1.7 million. The Hard Work From our vantage point in history, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs looks and sounds so effortless and fully formed that it's easy to overlook the effort that went into making. Even today, the animation overseen by supervising director David Hand and designed by concept artist Albert Herter positively sparkles with life. The songs written by Frank Churchill and Larry Moody are timelessly catchy, but the finished film only gives a hint at the enormous behind-the-scenes work that went into Snow White. For every one of the roughly 362,000 cells that made it into the finished film, there were thousands more drawings and tests that never saw the inside of a theatre. Most sequences were conceived but later cut from production. One saw the dwarves build a bed for Snow White, while the second was a musical number called Music in Your Soup. These still exist in pencil test form. Pressure continued to mount as Snow White's release date approached. Walt Disney's daughter Diane later recalled. That says that while Snow White was spun, he was a ding dong, a photo finish race with their budget. He was running out of money and still had a lot to do when his deadline loomed up in December. The final moment. Through sheer determination, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs met its winter deadline and held its premiere on December 21st, 1937 at the Cathay Circle Theatre in Los Angeles. The response was little short of rapturous. And as history records, Snow White would soon go on to become the most profitable film of all time. When adjusted for inflation, Snow White's gross of more than $1.7 billion puts it comfortably ahead of 2013's Frozen. In risking so much while making Snow White, Disney not only established itself as a major force in Hollywood, paving the way for future hits such as Pinocchio, Bambi and Dumbo, but also established with the creative possibilities of the animated feature. Without Snow White, we wouldn't have modern hits like Tangled or Frozen, but it's also possible that we wouldn't have very different equally boundary pushing animated features such as Akira or Waltz with Bashir either. So that was the video guys. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like, share and comment on the video and do subscribe for more such content. So my name is Namit and you've been watching The Know How.